30 years ago was when the epidemic started. And New York had the distinction of being the epicenter. We've reached a point today, 30 years later, where both domestically in America and internationally, we can start to see the horizon to the AIDS epidemic. And New York is going to be a leader in making that happen. Yeah. 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 You know, in 1993, at the height of the epidemic, 15,000 New Yorkers were diagnosed with HIV. In 2012, that number had shrunk to 3,400. And by 2020, we want to see that number shrink even smaller, fewer than 700. What that means, what that means for you and for us is that for the first time, we will see the number of New Yorkers living with HIV and AIDS go down. And what we will do to achieve that will be the international model. We have already astounded many others. Today in New York State, we have a 40% reduction in cases of new HIV and AIDS-related deaths in the last decade alone. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be injection drug use was a big cause for a lot of the epidemic. And today, fewer than 5% of new cases are from injection drug use. It used to be that moms transmitted HIV to their kids regularly. Last year, out of 240,000 live births in the state of New York, we know of two cases of mother-to-child transmission. New York is the leader. We are already 50% higher than the rest of the country in terms of our viral suppression rates. For the first time, more than half of all New Yorkers diagnosed with HIV are virally suppressed. But our work is not done. Governor Cuomo is well aware of the challenges, and with his executive budget, he has included one of the key drivers to ending the AIDS epidemic. This includes simplifying consent for HIV testing, enhancing data sharing, so that whenever you get care, you can get plugged back into the system. It means ensuring access to safe, stable, affordable housing with funding to support the proposed 30% rent cap. We know that housing is health care, and, and we're fully behind that. But our work is not yet done. We still need to maximize the Medicaid benefit and expand every opportunity with real dollars to support the end of the epidemic. We're working with pharmaceutical companies to lower the pricing of these drugs. We're expanding on new biomedical advances such as pre-exposure prophylaxis yes. to reach yes. those yes. highest yes. risk populations, yes. including men who have sex with men. And we have to make sure that no one subgroup is disproportionately impacted. Right. You know, I, I've talked a lot about some of the numbers, but I want to change gears for a second and talk about some of the people. Jeremy Saunders, a vocal New York, who was instrumental last year in getting our Hep C uh, legislation passed. Yeah! Mark Harrington of TAG, who's been pushing the FDA nonstop to get these drugs approved in time. Thanks, Mark. Dan Teets, who's been working on issues related to aging with HIV for a long time and has been a champion on many fronts. And we couldn't stop without saying Charles King of Housing Group. So the numbers speak for themselves, but the reality is this epidemic this disease, we are going to win it because of the individual actions of each and every one of you. So keep up your good work, keep pushing us, and we will push back, but keep pushing us even harder. Thank you very much.